and we are live. Uh, welcome to Iggles, Miggles, and More, the panel on the International Geek Girl Pin Pal Club. Uh, I'm Sarah. Uh, I'll be moderating this fun time, and uh, one of the reasons I am is because I am actually an Iggle, uh, and we'll discuss what that is in just a second. So. Was that our cue? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm getting weird feedback where I can hear myself. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Do you want us to That's like talk and we can like test it out or something? No, it's okay. I will just pretend that I can't hear what I just said a moment ago. A uh, little technical glitch, but anyway. Uh, now we're going to go to our panelists. Uh, we'll listen to, uh, first up is Leslie, tell us who you are and what you do. Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in to this awesome panel about the International Geek Girl Pen Pals Club. I'm Leslie Stewart, I go by the nickname Stewie, sometimes I go by Stoobs, and I go by Darling Stewie on Twitter. And yeah, Emily and I are the co-founders of this really fun geek girl community where we match up pen pals and we do all kinds of fun stuff online like activities and stuff on our forums and we love stationery, we love stickers, we love rainbows, maybe just me. But yeah, it's an awesome project. And I will, yeah, I'll take it over to uh, <laughs> Emily Farquharson from the United <laughs> Kingdom. Hi! Um, hi. I'm Emily, I'm 30, and I started this club, as Stubes just said, about nine months ago. We're coming up to our, how is it, more than nine months? No, 11 months. Yeah, I think it's hell. like 11 months. We started it in March 2013. Okay. Yeah, hell. Oh dear. Um, nearly said bloody hell then, that would have amused Stubes. Um, <laughs> Um, I work in marketing as my day job, but I'm a bit of a weirdo. I like draw creepy things, like creepy things, like showing creepy things to other people. But I also like Disney, so you know it all balances out in the end. Uh, Everyone for the Star Wars crew today. Thank you very much. And I am the leader of the mighty, mighty House Glados. <laughs> House Glados. Technically, I should have shuffled on into Jen's house, but I'm the co-founder. If I want to stay in Glados, I'm staying in Glados. So. I think House Granger could kick all of House Glados's butts. Yeah, but maybe yeah, yeah, we've heard this all before. Uh, house Organa has to disagree with both of you there. <laughs> so for all of you wondering, like what we're talking about with houses, like how the Geek Girl Pen Pals Club works is we sort everyone into a house based on their age so that you can kind of like intermingle with people around your same age. So Granger is 13 to 17 year olds and then we've got 18 to 24 which is House Quinn. Then House uh, GLaDOS is 25 to 29 and then House Organa is 30 plus. So that's how we kind of like sort people and keep them with their cool peeps. And it also helps when we're sorting people out to pair them. That's it's kind of a dual system. It's fun because, you know, who doesn't want to be in a house? But also helps us behind the scenes when we're tinkering like little pixies. Oh, yeah. It was a good way for <laughs> us to, like, divide it up so that we would not have to just have us all pairing a big mash. But it was a good way to kind of divide it up so that when we manually do these, these geek pairings, we had kind of a sorted way to do it. And let's be honest, herding geek girls is a lot like herding cats. Everyone's just so excited and happy to be there. Oh my like, gosh, Iggle's gone around, wild. Throwing <laughs> out bloody Janeway gifts, talking to you, Summer. Um, and yeah, it's just it's an awesome community. I'm so like um, proud, right. happy. Don't ever repeat this to anyone. That I, <laughs> that I think, it'll ruin my rep, man. Um, no, it's, it's truly a really cool place to hang out and I've met so many awesome, awesome people and just knowing that we've been there tinkering, making little friendships all over the world. It's oh just, man, it's so much fun. It's so awesome. It's so, so easy to like, bog down in rubbish when we're just like, yeah, friendship and magic and stickers and stuff. I don't know why, so why did I just start singing that? Oh my god. Well, it is a very, very uh, positive community I've seen. Like, people are very friendly. Um, and, it, 
because it's it's a great thing to kind of trust in uh, you know chance on who you're going to get uh, as a pen pal. So you guys explain the uh, the houses, but then there's the the Iggles and the Miggles, and then uh, maybe if you want to talk a little bit about how you actually pair people up. Um. Emily, are you still there? It looks like you might be glitching. Oh, no, you're still there. Okay. So the pairing process is a massive labor of love. It's it's crazy. We have this form site that people will submit their name and their age and their geek loves to, and then Emily goes into the back end and extracts all, it all in, like, big old spreadsheets. And we've got these just... I'll even show you for a second. Let me pull it up so that you can see a little bit about the back end of the Geek Girl Pen Pals Club. Well, That's exciting. Cool uh, sneak peek back there. Yeah, it's, I mean, Google Drive has been invaluable in helping us with all of this. Registration in pairs. Okay, so I'm about to, to screen share here. What's up? <laughs> so here you can see, this is our Google Drive, and it's just like a huge like all this crazy stuff like you can see we've got you know these excels for every round and you know they go into these massive spreadsheets that look something like this and they're just huge like we just have to weed through like all of these different color coded all the submissions come in this way and because we do approximately 500 to 1000 pairs per month it wow. just becomes like it's massive. And the way that we do this is, you know, I'll go into the Granger spreadsheet and I'll have to, like, select a line and, and then I'll, like, what I do is that I bold the entire line and then I'll look through the, the interests and then I'll say, well, this person likes, you know, The Fault in Our Stars, which is a book by John Green, I think. Yeah. So you could see here, like, we have another John Green, but you wouldn't be able to necessarily match them based on an algorithm or anything like that. So you kind of have to go through and see. You know, if someone yeah. says they like PlayStation games, for example, you might see someone else has listed a, the name of a PlayStation game. So you would know that they might be a good match. Um, Harry Potter, some people put J.K. Rowling. Um, some people put TV shows, so it's more generalized. So we would just try to match them with someone that maybe had listed a lot of TV shows as their interest so that's kind of how we decide who gets matched. And they all get matched in their age groups. And I like to think that there's a little bit of feminine intuition that goes into it as well. Because I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like we have a sense of, you know, this person would be good for that person. And I like to think there's a little bit of magic that goes into it. <laughs> I, uh, I think that's probably a good way of looking at it. Uh, I've had two pen pals. And both of them, we've been matched uh, primarily over our reading interests. And I think that's, like, the best way to make new friends. Uh, yeah, I'm biased because I'm a book lover. But I know, at least from my own personal experience, you guys did a really good job matching me with people. That's really awesome. Oh, we I'm actually... So oh, cool. go ahead, Emily. Oh, no, I was just, you know, saying that's awesome. Just, you know, <laughs> chat with the background. Just, you know, just leave me here. I'm fine. After my, I'm, I'm mortified that I sang. I don't know why I sang. What is wrong with me? I'm just, you know, I'm just going to say, you're so eloquent, Stuart. You're, just, just come you're on. doing good, Emily. You're doing good. You're doing good, baby. You're doing good. Keep it up. I'm um, I wanted to tell you guys an interesting story because this was probably one of the like most heartwarming and rewarding things that there's there's been a lot of these kind of like you know and I'm a woman so maybe I'm just emotional but we in like one of our first rounds now this happened March 2013 um, one of our current uh, bloggers on our blog which is called Plus Five Charisma had sent us an email after she had been paired and she had said to uh, me and Emily, because we were the only ones doing this at that point. So she said, Emily and Stewie, I think you have a brilliant future in matchmaking ahead of you because you just matched me with my best friend of 15 years. <laughs> That's fantastic. Eleanor and I grew up in Texas together and met in fifth grade. Since then, we've been inseparable, playing Pirates in the Park, et cetera, et cetera. Then they, long story short, they moved away to two different states. And they listed basically the same geek loves, so we, we had matched them. You know, one of them lives uh, in a different state than the other one. And they were just so shocked that they had been matched because they knew each other in real life, and they had been best friends. So I just, I don't know, that was just like, well, how in the world? But, yeah, <laughs> I, like to, I like to think that a little bit of magic goes into it, certainly. That is fantastic. 
Um, it's heartwarming. It, it, like, gives me warm fuzzy. It's like, well, it makes me happy because I could, you know, I've, gr you know, grown so fond of all the people that I work with on the staff and all the girls in the community, and it's great to know that all of them are making these, you know, good bonds with each other. Um, yes, Emily? <laughs> I was just saying what she said, but no, it's... <laughs> Like, You're doing great. Um, it is really hard though, like sometimes pairing people up, especially when they're really vague. Like when we relaunched the website in January, we decided to put in a little guide to getting a good match because, especially, I'd say the younger houses, a lot of people you just get TV, movies, films, there's like nothing. It's like tumbleweed. They're the tumbleweed. Of they like, like tumbleweed. They have a tumbleweed affinity. What? Like, <laughs> who doesn't like tumbleweeds? <laughs> but we love them nonetheless. So then it's like, right, now I need to find someone to match this person. And what I do, because we, we split into the, the different houses and each overlord, matches those particular houses. We've all got our own like different ways of matching up. And what I do if I get a bit of a vague selection, I check out the email address. Email addresses are very telling. Like it's some true, they are. Out, and some really? Like, they put really like TV, films, books. But then their email address is being like Sherlock Lover 221. And you're like, right, so why didn't you put Sherlock down? That would have been so much easier. Yeah. No, we have totally creep stalked people online in a totally <laughs> not creepy way. But, like, if I get someone and, like, they're, you know, even their pen pal writes to me and they're like, this person isn't writing back to me and they'll like me and I'm sad. So I'm like, I'll find out who this person is. So I'll type in their email in Google and I'll find them on Facebook and I'll see what's up with them and I'll maybe I'll ping them and I'll be like, hey, you know, we matched you with your pen pal. What are you doing? What are you up to? Can we talk about this? Or, yeah, if I'm not sure, like, what their their geek loves, you know, are all about, I try to get some more, like, some more deets about them, so I find them on Twitter or something. We're not creepy people, but we're kind of creepy people. <laughs> <laughs> but we do it because we care. We do it because we really want to make good matches with people, so yeah, if someone, God. you know, if someone doesn't necessarily list the most telling geek loves, then we, we try to really match up with somebody good. So it sounds like you guys put a lot of, like, like not just care, but you're putting a lot of your own time and effort into oh, yeah. it. Oh, which yeah. seems to kind of go back to the theme of encouraging people to write actual handwritten letters, which yeah. I think uh, is something, if you guys uh, wanted to talk about that a little, because that's what sets this a little bit apart from a lot of, you know, clubs about, hey, we all love the same thing this is different. You're encouraging people to kind of embrace this old school method of communication. You know, we're yeah. not emailing each other. And I mean, I'm the kind of person, and I think Emily is similar, where like, we're online a lot, we're internet people, this is, you know, we're, we're millennials, this is the generation of YouTubers and computer lovers, and I work in the internet industry, I work for eBay, so, like, I work for the internet, you know what I mean? I'm, I sit at a desk, eight hours a day, I'm on the computer, and, you know, part of this was me really wishing that I could kind of detach myself from this digital world and, you know, make connections with people using the internet, but, you know, making it a little bit more interesting than that. Um, I mean, that kind of goes back to our origin story, too, where Emily and I had become friends through, through the blogosphere and through Twitter, and we were just chatting about how I was like, well, Emily's so cool, she's from England, and I love the Spice Girls, and you know, I love curly whirlies, and Emily was like, well, we should, you know, send each other some mail or something, and I was like, you need to send me some curly whirlies, because those are my favorite candy, and they're only, you can only really find them in England, and mm -hmm. after yeah. me desperately begging for candy. sugar, like, I was like, Emily, please, I need sugar, I need a sugar coma right now, and she was like, <laughs> was like no, you need to calm down, get away from me, and I was like, Emily, send me candy, and she was like, oh, <laughs> That is exactly how it happened. <laughs> because, but who could say no to that face? So I'm so selfish, though. I really was just like, how can I get some curly whirlies? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. That's what we like, did wait, say wait, when we were starting. It was like, yes, if we do this club, we'll get lots of free candy, of which I have a ton, a ton of, like, candy from all over the world just scattered around behind really? me. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, see, there, 
part of it is swaps. Like, from we, did, home we don't home. do just... Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just saying that I've got some candy hot. Send yeah, candy like, we don't... Burgers. We don't just swap letters. Like, we do swap swaps. Like, we, we do candy swaps. We do Christmas gift swaps. We do secret Santas. We do... Valentine swaps, I've got here like a whole bunch of Valentines that I got sent to me from like all my eagles. <laughs> like, my eagles sent me all these Valentines and I just love them. Like this one has Darth Vader on it. I love that. And this one has, <laughs> is that Bumblebee? It has Bumblebee on it. So like oh, all these that is fantastic. geeky little Valentines that you used to give people in, in third grade and you know. Oh, this one's cute. You stole both of my hearts. Oh, that is awesome. But yeah, I got all these like cute, cute Valentines in this swap, and it just like it, you know warms your heart every day. It really does. Here is the first bunch of things that my lovely Stube sent me. Lots of little post-its saying that you are as delightful as a bag of marshmallows. Yes, I am. <laughs> That's how cute that is. Aww. We're spreading joy and love and positivity on the internet and in real life and. So much fun. I'm just going to randomly show you some of the awesome things that I've got. Because I, too, have a box. These a box are all the Christmas cards that I was sent, like, in the holiday gift swap, which is amazing. I sent quite a lot out, too, but it's just fantastic. And to just briefly segue onto the achievements on the new website, one of, totally. my, one of my test subjects sent me a lovely little ditty about how <laughs> in order to get a bribery achievement. So, you know, it's not just about writing letters, it's about sending cute little things to get points that mean <laughs> really nothing in the grand scheme of things but are awesome to collect. I mean, if you guys want our addresses and you want to send us candy, that's okay with us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just post my address online and whoever wants to send me candy, that's totally fine. <laughs> Um, but we can talk about the achievements for just one second to kind of explain that. Totally. Because, like, when we first started the site, it was really just, like, a form. And it was just, like, a sign up, get a pen pal, and that's the end of it. But then Emily and I built a full-blown website last year to kind of, like, be a community. We built it on Ning, and it was, like, a social network. So that's it had around, like, 6,000 members, and we had done, like, a crap ton of pairings, too. But then we wanted to get away from Ning because it costs a lot of money. So we built it, the site again on WordPress, and we introduced uh, achievements, which are sort of cool, like, you know, when you're playing Xbox or whatever, you can unlock achievements. So there's interesting ways to kind of go onto the website, and if you click around, sometimes you can find them. You unlock them for participating in activities on the site. So, for example, if you participated in the cool Valentine swap, They'll, you know, there'll be a, an achievement code to unlock that. So you can kind of chronicle your journey through the Girl Pen Pals Club and what kind of fun activities you partake in. And if you're tuned in to this really cool Contessa panel, you can use code CONTESSA2014 to unlock the secret five-point achievement. Ooh! Ooh is right! <laughs> So, I, I am thrilled that you guys had a Contessa thing to do. That's so cool. Yeah, so if you want to be cool, go and look well, that up. We discovered that eagles go crazy, create like seriously nuts for the achievements. They were going wild searching because me being really evil, I decided to hide them all over the site in <laughs> little invisible images that you can't see, making like full Text stops link. and commas into like single links to then unlock and then through the pitfalls because if you get too greedy kids mm -hmm. sometimes a pitfall will happen and you will lose 10 points. Oh. There are sneaky sneaky ones that might oh, oh. knock you on your butt but you know what it's fun it's all it's all fun. It's all fun. I love yeah. the pitfall, pitfall scene though because it's a shout out to Animal Crossing and that's like one of my favorite games of all time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely don't see any problems with that. Mm -mm. Um, you so can't make them fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, so I know you guys uh, had at least one staff change uh, since the beginning. Did you guys want to talk about staff? 
Yes, because our staff are amazing and I love them and I wish I could just squish them all in a big hug forever. It makes me so sad that we're all so many, many thousands of miles apart. So it, it, actually, it actually hurts my little black heart that I can't just go, oh, I love you in person and not just, you know, via tubes and wires. But um, yeah, do you want me to come to new tubes or do you want to speak more eloquently? It's up to you. If you want to talk, you, you totally go ahead, or I can do it. It's up to you. Okay, I'll talk. Okay. Uh, so, first off, there was just me and Stubes. In the beginning, in the first maybe two, two weeks, three weeks, who knows? Because that fortnight or whatever it was, was crazy. I think um, it was the first month, because we had done like 3,000 pairings, and then it was like, holy crap, this is out of control, we need help. That entire period of my life is just a big blur because I did the John Connolly illustrations at the same time. So I was working on some illustrations for a book at the same time as we launched the Pen Pal Club and everything just went nuts. It was crazy. But we got Emma first. Emma first. Yes. You knew Emma before I knew Emma. I think it was just like a Twitter blog connection. Like we all had blogs, we all had Twitter. I remember thinking, she's from Australia. And I, I wanted it to be global. I wanted it to be like, I'm the, I'm the United States girl. You know, we need to kind of be global if we are international. So she was actually the only person I could really think of that I knew from Australia. So I was like, well, let's do that. She didn't have a choice. We Plus, just Emma, we just went, Emma is adorable. Please. And, I mean, Emma loves drawing and stuff, and she loves rainbows and sunshine and dinosaurs. Emma and loves. So she definitely seemed like she would be a good fit for what we were building here, you know. Yeah, I was going to say, she sounds, like, perfect, exactly. Yeah, she was just kind of exactly what we're looking for, so we invited her onto the staff, and she she said, yes, yes, yes! <laughs> no, really like that, but that's what I envisioned in my head. <laughs> and, and Emma made the best intro video when we first started. Once, once Jen came on board a couple of weeks after Emma, and Jen is... Canadian, from Canada, obviously, um, and she's amazing, as, so is Emma, um, and then we did intro videos because Stewie made us, she made us under dress to make, I know, think we are very well. lovely, personable people, Emily, I think <laughs> everyone wants to see us online, <laughs> yeah, but not hey, talking. it makes a big difference to, uh, to see the people that you're talking about. Yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. very important to to see women doing this stuff, which is the whole point of Contessa. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. And plus, Emily has an accent, which, like, <laughs> and so does Emma. So I was like, you guys have to make videos, talk as much as you possibly can, because all I want to hear is your sweet, silky <laughs> <laughs> It's just a thing. Like, I don't know. All people <laughs> love British and Australian accents. Yeah, I, I agree. I am a complete sucker. It goes without saying. Uh, at this point, I do want to remind our viewers that uh, if they do have any questions, they can put them either in the uh, on the YouTube page, on the event page, uh, and actually if you're watching the video through Google Hangouts, you should be able to uh, submit questions directly, and we will take those if you have any questions. Yes, send us an Oh, we just got a question. <laughs> It's like they were waiting. Excellent. Um, we can answer that now, or would you guys like to, to discuss some more stuff? Well, we can wrap up the, the staff chatter, because I know that um, our newest staff members, um, Toasty, who is Ariel, she came on to help me out because I'm getting married in four months. <laughs> so, like, I'm super, super freaking busy with that. So um, they all kind of got together, and they, you know, took submissions for who might be able to come in and help me do my work on the site and the Granger pairings and things like that. So they picked Ariel to do that. And then we also have um, three new ninjas who help us out as well. So they're four moderators and they also kind of just like keep things going. Um, so that would be that's Summer and Valerie and Kimberly. And there are awesome ninjas. So basically there's like eight of us now that kind of take the reins on everything. And by the way, Jen is from Canada. She's super nice, and she reminds me of a moose because moose are cute. Um, Ariel did want to know who your favorite uh, ninja is. 
Oh. <laughs> First, oh, duh. Go back to bed, ninjas. You shouldn't be out of bed at this hour. <laughs> I just thought you might uh, want to answer that. That's not a very fair question. And some would like to know what she has to do to be the favorite ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, I think we should brown them. <laughs> I'm just. House. It's like you said the word ninja and they appeared. It's really. Um, That's what they do. They do. They really do. They sneak up on you like, wah! Like, just exactly like that. But with Facebook stickers, seriously, they really. Oh my god. The Facebook stickers never stop. <laughs> that's how we communicate on an instantaneous level with Facebook chat. So 24-7, there is mm -hmm. one chat going with eight crazy ladies scattered all over the world sharing Facebook stickers of foxes because they're the best ones, ninjas. You know. You know. Uh, and, foxes are okay, I guess. <laughs> and the little and, Lego Shakespeare. We love him, too. Um, can anyone see this chat? Is it like something that's on your Facebook page or? No, no. This is just like kind of the behind the scenes of how we, you know, delegate work and figure out what we're going to do. Um, but we do this, we do have Google Hangouts on air sometimes, which are on our YouTube page, which we can link up after this. Um, we've only done maybe three or four of them and then we've got our intro videos. But I mean, I do think that if the eight of us or if the four of us or if the five of us or, you know, whoever is available wants to of us. Yeah, I mean, if it was if it was something that people would want to watch, we'd, we'd probably do it more. Um, but yeah, like we do get into Google Hangouts on air. Is that what we're doing right now? Yep. Cool. Well, that's what we do. We do that one. Okay. That's and fun. Uh, remind me after, and we can share this video to your page as well. <gasps> okay. Um, let's see. We have a couple more uh, subjects to talk about, but let's take a, a break from that and take Kimberly's question, uh, which yep. is really interesting. I'll read it for those playing along at home. I'd love to know, have there been any unintended consequences for starting the IGGPPC? Consequences? That's an interesting word. I would say that a lot of our time that I normally would be doing anything else, I now have, have really like had to dedicate a portion of my life to this. Like, like yeah. take time, like it is time consuming, like every day, you know, and you know, certain times of the month it's like you have to spend, you know, a couple of hours or however long to, to pair people and just being involved, but I wouldn't say it's a consequence, I would just say it's sort of a, like a reprioritization of what normally would have just been like me doing other things. Yeah. How about you, Emily? Um, yeah, about the same thing. It's what I was just going to say in response to what Steve's just said is that it's quite, we have such a strong bond, like the core staff of the overlords and then the ninjas, but all of us together, in that especially like six months ago, there's various things going on. Because we all have lives, you know, we've all got partners and full-time jobs and all the rest of it, we've just got to make time. But the good thing is because we're so in tune with each other, which is crazy because we're all so far away, um, that we can pick up each other's slack. So when someone's got so much on somewhere else in the life, someone else can step in and go, oh, I'll do your parents this month, don't worry. It's, cool. it, it's hard, like, I, but I don't know, it's crazy I speak, to, it, it seems weird, but like I talked to my partner Liam about the girls like all the time I would just be like yeah we're doing this with the club and we've done this on the website and this is happening and that is happening and you know even though we are so far apart we are like really close as friends as well as just working together which is the most unintended, uh, unintended consequence I have found because I never expected to then suddenly have three and then four and then now eight of the seven, sorry, yeah. awesome new friends that I speak to every day and just like not only share bits of do pen pal stuff, but also just like share life with, do you know what I mean? Just like you would with your friend that like lives down the street that you've known all your life. So it's it's an, in, an unintended consequence. That's it's kind of a cool thing about the community though because I can find like a YouTube video that I really love and I know immediately that 
all of the members of our Facebook page and our Twitter and all of the Iggles and Miggles are going to like it because we're just like, we're this big group of people, but we're all kind of in sync, you know? I mean, like, it's, it's, we all have a lot of interests, but, I mean, every time we share something to the Facebook page, I feel like lots and lots of people are receptive to it, and, and we all just kind of have this, like, this jive, you know, where we all kind of love the same things and get along, and, you know, even if I'm having a crap day and I just check out the IGG PPC hashtag on Twitter or I, like, poke out to some people on Twitter, like, everyone's just always really sweet and loving and, the Eagles and Miggles are just all, all real loving people and they're positive and they all have always have a nice thing to say. I mean, there's never really been any fights or any drama. So it's just like a drama free zone for like friendship and, and just generally being positive with each other. And it's, it's awesome because I always feel like I have someone to just kind of like bitch at or talk to or whatever. That sounds That's great. True. Yeah, so check out the forums, check out the Twitter. I mean, that's kind of where we, we do our best conversations, but that's where all the good stuff happens. Yeah, definitely on Twitter. There's all kinds of stuff going off all over there. We do daily polls where we just ask a random question, sort of fancifully, um, and then ask for eagle responses. Like, if you were to take your favorite character from your favorite book and go on an adventure, where would you go? And other uh -huh. such whimsical, like... Yeah, let's just daydream and think about this question for five minutes, and you know, yeah, nice. So I really enjoy like seeing what everyone like responds like to the questions. It's very creative. I like it. Um, actually, you mentioning you know the way you guys interact uh, digitally, it made me start wondering whether or not you guys have ever met in real life. Uh, and also because I know uh, people organize meetups for the. The, the club, so I wasn't sure if that was something that you guys uh, had ever taken part in. I uh, wish. <laughs> yeah, we've never, the staff have never met each other, any of them, but I've been to, we did a meet-up last year in um, Manchester at a comic convention there, and um, six or seven girls came, and it was really awesome, and it, I just had an operation, so they were pushing me around in my wheelchair like I was... Um, in Wacky Races, it was brilliant. Yeah, I too did a meetup as well. And the meetups are really cool because you meet people that you don't even like know are in the club. I mean, you kind of see their faces on Twitter and on you know the Facebook event page, and it's like, I'm coming to this meetup to meet all the other geek girl pen pals and to see them in real life versus someone that you've been talking to on Twitter for a long time is really, really cool. And um, we had our meetup in June of 2013 at the Way Station in Brooklyn, New York, which is a Doctor Who themed bar, which is trippy and cool, which I'm sure all of the Eagles would love that. Um, but yeah, I just, I met so many people that were bloggers and Twitter people and Eagles, and you know, I'm still friends with them, we still talk all the time, and it just, it feels so good to be able to meet people who are just like, thanks for making this community, I love all the people I've met, I love my pen pal, thank you so much, and it just, it, it makes us all feel good that we can just kind of bond, like, to see someone's facial expression, you know, and to give them a hug is just so different than just to tweet at them, so. Definitely. Um, let's see, we've got a few other things to cover, and then we'll get to more questions, um, although Jake would like to shout out to the Niggles. Yeah, <laughs> we, I mean, we can kind of explain, like, so an Iggle is a female member of our community, and a Miggle is a male member of our member of our community. Um, <laughs> when we like initially started this, we thought that no guy would really be into it because we wanted to swap Lisa Frank stationery and Sanrio and Hello Kitty pens, and we just assumed that only girls would really be into that sort of thing. But of course, there are a lot of other parts of the community that aren't necessarily girly stationery. You know, we've got activities, we've got a cinema club, we've got a book club and, you know, the forums and Twitter and stuff, so it's just a cool community, and so we do have Miggles, and Jake, hi Jake, hi Sarah, <laughs> um, but yeah, like, we do have Miggles and Iggles, so they're all awesome, uh, mostly a girl-oriented community, but of course the guys make, make it awesome. I would consider my fiancé, Mark, a Miggle. He's watching downstairs, I think. <laughs> hi there. Um, let's see, uh, yeah, uh, I know right now, 
uh, you don't pair Iggles and Miggles, so is that uh, something that you're thinking of doing, or...? We um, actually spoke about this earlier today. Yeah. <laughs> Not something... Because of the way that it works in the back end of the spreadsheet, it's not an easy thing to do. And really, we've had a couple of trolls kick off at us and blow sand in his face about it, but literally maybe two, three. So we're not really getting his knickers in a twist about that. Um, but yeah, it, it is an option down the line to maybe think about doing mixed gender pairings, but it's a lot of time and thought to sort of work it out and implement it and sort of it maybe later in the year. I mean, I think one of the things that when we first built the site and when we first started doing this, we didn't think that guys would be interested, so we didn't have like a gender box, you know, don't tell us like if you're male or female. We just assumed it was all girls. But then someone on Tumblr was like, you know, this is a little bit backwards. Don't you think this is exclusionist of males and sexist that you won't let guys do it? It's called the Geek Girl Pen Pals Club. So like he tried to, you know, rip us a new one about that. And and we came back at him and we were like, hey man, if you want a pen pal and you like Lisa Frank or whatever, you can join up. So we had to add all of this like disclaimer text that was like, it's not only girls. If guys want to do it, they could. Um, but we decided to pair within the sexes like girls to girls and guys to guys because we did have a couple of guys who were a little bit confused about the club and seemed to think it was more like a dating site so we kinda just wanted to protect people from someone that was looking for something more than just a pen pal or a friendship and we, we had to make it really clear like you know this isn't a dating site we don't think that the members will feel comfortable knowing that there are people like prowling around looking for a hookup or whatever so we just want to make sure that we keep the members safe. We, you know, safety is a big thing for us, and you know, make sure that all, all of the the reasoning that we're doing this is is out on the table. You know, it's not a dating site. You know, maybe that happens for some people. That that's cool, but that's not the purpose of the Geek Girl Pen Pals Club. So that's part of the reason that we kind of like do the the gender pairings the way that we do because some guys were like, well, I'm looking for a geeky girl, and I, she's going to be my dream girl, and mm -hmm. I'm the doctor to her companion. <laughs> so you know. Yeah, um, I definitely, uh, I hadn't considered that, so that's good to, to know. It, 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 I mean, we've had like, you know, 10,000 people being involved, and it was really just like three people that had been a little confused about it. So, I mean, it's rare, but again, like, safety is our number one thing. We don't want to match a girl and a guy, and then for her to come back and be like, oh, this guy is like saying all this stuff to me, he wants to get together, he wants to date me, or vice versa, you know, maybe a guy. Like, this girl's yeah. trying to date me. I'm not ready for this. You know what I mean? So, I mean, um, it could happen anyway, but... Yeah, I was going to say, it's like, that's that's only the, the focus on the heterosexual component. True. It's so true. Like, I mean, it could happen, but again, like, the only problem that we've had is a couple of guys who have been, you know... So, I don't want to be sexist about it, but I'm just trying to be realistic, and that that's kind of just what ha has happened. And, I mean, it's such a small number, so the, the majority of what you're seeing here is just this really loving and supportive community that's really based around these are the things we want. Yeah. It's been so good though. I love it. And yeah, yeah if any respect. Oh sorry, go ahead, Emily. I was just gonna say there's a lot of respect within the community for all members seem to just get on and respect each other. There's no Yeah they have. Not everyone loves the same things and we like to cast the geek net as wide as possible from, you know, whatever. It's, to me, if you're going to be passionate about something, you're geeky about it, it's your, you know what I mean? It's, to me, the words are interchangeable. Um, I don't know about anyone else. But, you know, if you're into drawing or if you're into, you know, Twin Peaks, come at me if you like Twin Peaks, seriously. Uh, <laughs> I like Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so obsessed with it, it's not, it's beyond a joke now. Um, check you out, chugging your milk like a champion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just looked up and you were just like, chug, chug, chug. That's not milk, that's coconut water. Oh, uh, I had some of that the other way, if I put it in the fridge, it makes me really sad. It's not very nice. I love coconut water. <laughs> um, now, 
now that I've got it in my head that I need to uh, set up a drawing Twin Peaks marathon with Emily. Um, let's see. Now, we do have uh, some good questions uh, that, since we have 20 minutes left, uh, if we want to switch over to questions. And then at the very end, I'll give you guys a little bit of time for, like, last thoughts in case you want to have them or if you just want to throw candy at the computer screen or whatever you feel like uh, if, if your cat wants to make a guest appearance. You might. Um, <laughs> I locked my cat out, so. Uh, the first question we've got here is, what is the worst candy you've gotten in the mail so far? Emily, I'm sorry. It's that Sherber Fountain. <laughs> I love the... I love the... I love the sherbet white powder stuff, but I hate licorice. And I don't know if you call it anise or licorice, black licorice, but black licorice. No, I, I only send them to everyone because Jen's a freak. Jen really likes Jen has a serious love affair with licorice to the point where we get a little worried about it sometimes because she loves that stuff hard. Really, she, she's. I worry about her for many reasons, but yeah. that's. <laughs> um, yeah, I just don't like black licorice. How about you, Emily? No, I'm not a fan of black licorice either, but I'll send you a sherbet dib dab, which is the same sherbet, but just with a lolly, not with the licorice. But oh, yeah, because yeah. Jen has such a licorice problem. I was telling, in, over here we have the cold sherbet fountains. It's a tube with sherbet in the bottom, and you just get a stick of licorice that you just dip in and then eat the, or use it as a spoon for the sherbet, whatever. Um, and because Jen's uh, obsessed with licorice, I sent them to all of them. But yeah, I, was... I don't blame them for hating. I was going to say, if, if it's too much licorice for her to handle, I, I can take some off her hands. The trust we've just built on the community to have shattered. Uh, my heart is broken. Oh my god. Oh, Emily, I guess I should have warned you. <laughs> Emily, did you get any candy that you didn't like besides? Do you, I mean, you don't like black licorice, but did you get any other candy that you didn't like? Not that I don't like chocolate, it's that chocolate See, does not like me. That's true, you can't eat chocolate or marshmallows, right? No, I can eat marshmallows. Oh, okay. I can't have milk, so I can't have any, like, milk chocolate. Mm. No, um, Ash, who is from, who live, she's from America, but she lives in Hong Kong. She was my Halloween candy swap, and the entire pack of stuff she sent me was awesome, apart from these grape-flavored chewy sweets, which tasted like eating erasers. They were very nice. Erasers? Sorry, Ash, you, I love you. You send me such nice stuff, but please don't send me those again. They were nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, uh, I, I think we lost Emily. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I'm sure she will come back. Yeah, she'll be back. Um, that was fantastically funny. Um, while we're waiting for her, uh, the next question that uh, I think you can probably help us with, I'm, I'm sure it was some sort of like, you know, because she was bad-mouthing licorice candy. Yeah, licorice kicked her out. <laughs> totally did. Totally licorice was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, while we're waiting for her, for Emily to come back, uh, you might get started on our next question. Sure. Which is... Uh, what current or future uh, things with the club are you most looking forward to? Uh, well, the achievements is the newest thing that I don't think we really had foreseen happening uh, with the club. But that's a, a new and exciting thing, and it's like a thing that people can do kind of all month long, because the pen pal pairings only happen once a month on the 15th. Um, but in the future, I foresee the community growing, I foresee the kinds of things, and I don't know if this is in the works, but I, I hope it is. I foresee us having, you know, tables at Comic-Cons, and I foresee us participating in large group activities. Um, I know that for our house competition in the first year, we had encouraged all of the Eagles to get up, get out of their houses, take photos around their community. We had encouraged them to donate some of their clothes to the Goodwill. We had encouraged them to donate food to the soup kitchens. So I am hoping that we can grow the community into like a, a, a big global effort that's going to be positive uh, 
for for all people, that sort of a thing. Because that was really encouraging for us in in the first house competition to do these kinds of of charitable things that that help 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 not just us, but you know help our local hometowns and things like that. So I'm hoping we can do more things like that. Um, and then I'm I'm seeing a, a stamp in the that they sell in all post offices across the world that has our logo on it. You know, wow. it's a whole Geek Girl Pen Pals Club stamp, and everyone knows that we're the Geek Girl Pen Pals Club, and, you know, it's just like a thing. I don't know. It's like we're just ready to, to be on the Ellen Show and take over the world, and we're not, you know, we're not stopping. <laughs> that That is really not just uh, ambitious, but just, like, awesome. Crazy. Awesome. <laughs> you have to be super ambitious, I think, if you're going to, Get anything done, so I just I just shoot for the stars, and I'll just pretend that Ellen DeGeneres is watching and that she wants us on the show. <laughs> now it looks like Emily's uh, iPad died. So sad. Oh, so she can't come back? I'm not sure she's going to be able to make it back. I'm going to cry. I know that's so very sad. That actually makes me think that um, we're going to need to do this again. We can think about. Yeah, we, we need, need to do this again. again. <laughs> I mean, I would love it. This has been a lot of fun. I actually want to join in some of the games on contests. And I, I've been watching a lot of beer and board games. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, say that again? Beer and board games on YouTube? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like my new obsession. And, like, I don't know. I feel like it, it and contests that have some kind of, like, synergy that, that's got to happen. But that is my new favorite show. It's so ridiculous. It's so funny. Uh, I just, like, I want to do that. I want, like, you know, me and three of my friends to sit around and drink beer and play ridiculous old school board games. <laughs> that sounds like a really good time. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I will not... Uh, I, I will say, though, that we have our first board games at Contessa this year. So it is not too late. You That's cool. Are you guys you doing uh, Cards Against Humanity at all? No, but you know what? I'm going to put that down as a note for to do that next year. Yeah, uh, that game is ridiculous. I mean, it's obviously <laughs> like, you know, 18 plus kind of a thing, but... Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's a good time. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, if what I can do is uh, I'll email Emily and get her answer to what she's most looking forward to, uh, and then I'll post it on the event page so people can get her answer to it. Okay, that sounds good. Maybe she'll be in the chat. She's trying to join. Yeah. Well, next, because uh, now I'm going to put all the pressure on you. But, That's fine. You know. I can answer the rest of the questions, and then if Emily <laughs> and I want to do this again at some point, we can come back and, and rock it. Um, well, Claire would like to know that since you mentioned uh, world domination, you know, since the next step is to get your own... Uh, to get the logo on a postage stamp. Right, Obviously, right. world domination is, is next. Uh, so she'd like to know how you're going to go about doing that. <laughs> the, the stamp thing or world domination in general? Because I think world domination. All right. So <laughs> world domination, what's going to happen is I'm going to fly down to Australia where Emma lives, and we're going to wrangle us a couple of drop bears. If you don't know, a drop bear is a very dangerous, dangerous bear from Australia. Hi, Emily. She's back. Yay! Hi. Hi. I'm on my phone, so it may be a bit wobbly. Sorry. Oh, no. Sorry. I'm terrible. We Apart love from... you for coming back, so it's all, all is good. I'm just answering a question about how I would uh, achieve world domination. I know you'll have a good one for this. Um, but basically, I would go to Australia, wrangle some drop bears with Emma, go take them to Canada with Jen, put them on the, strap them to the backs of some rabid mooses. And then I would have laser beams that come out of their eyes that shoot rainbows that blind people with love, and then they would gallop all over the planet, blinding people with these rainbow laser beams, and then farting out cupcakes. That, <laughs> that would be delicious. So, I mean, that's that seems achievable to me. I don't think that that's too, too hard to accomplish. So that will... I, I see that as, like, a five-year plan, but I know some people... <laughs> Like, they like to make more, like, you know, one- to two-year plan, you know, ten-year plan. But this is definitely, like, a five-year plan for me. 
How about you, Emily? I'm just going to steal everyone's souls and then they'll be, you know, going to wrangle them with a big fishnet made of unicorn tears. Because unicorns are evil. That that stuff is strong shit, man. They're not evil. They're yes. misunderstood. This they has the sound... To their foreheads, man. This has the yeah, sound of, like, a long-running argument. I, I don't think it's an argument. I think it's Emily being confused about what a unicorn really is. <laughs> There's no debating that a unicorn is a beautiful creature that loves everyone that would that would stab evildoers. I'm not denying that they're not beautiful. They are beautiful. I just happen to run with the school of thought that unicorns are in fact devil creatures. <laughs> sent to earth to the imagination of every every person. As a ruse. That is how I will sneak in the back of the unicorns, because everyone's like, yeah, la la la, unicorns are awesome, and I'm like, no. Uh, Those okay. tears, the tears of a unicorn will burn. Burn acid rainbow. Burn! Yeah. If we do this again, it will be Team Unicorn versus Team Evil Unicorn. Ooh, actually, yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> is there a Team Evil Unicorn? I know there's a Team Unicorn. Uh, there is now. There should be, <laughs> but like, we all have to dress really goth, and well, like, just be really we like. We're actually starting a war with the, mm. the real team unicorn. We actually. No, we should. We should be team evil unicorn and be all like eyeliner and black lipstick, and you think you're so happy, but you know, I went to a Marilyn Manson concert, and let me tell you. Marilyn, <laughs> did you just say Marilyn McManson? <laughs> Whatever, Marilyn <laughs> McManson. He makes a burger at McDonald's. Oh, um, so we are, uh, in our last couple of minutes, um, I do have to say, you two have been fabulous to, to talk to. Um, and I just want to see if you have any last thoughts you want to wrap up with. Join our club. We're all <laughs> that's, uh, that's a good ending thought. And, and how would people join your club? I say this like I don't know, but... <laughs> Uh, go to www.geekgirlpenpals.com and click the login button on the top and sign up. And then away you go. That's for the forums. On the 15th of every month, we open the registration form for you so you can fill that in to actually get paired with a pen pal. The two are very different beasts. Right. And you can sign up every month to be paired. You can get as many pen pals as you want. Um... On our forums, there are a lot of other activities, so mm -hmm. you can join our book club, which would just be, you know, read a book, talk about it. Uh, there's a cinema club, there's meetups, there's the street team where you can get postcards and pins. Um, there's swaps and exchanges, so you can get, like, these cool valentines or whatever. I mean, if you have ideas for activities, things you want to do, you know, like, I know that they were playing Dungeons & Dragons on Skype, kind of a Contessa-style thing for a while. They had, like, a and d group that they had, so... Like, there's basically always people that want to hang out with you at the IGGPPC. So come hang out with us. Tweet us um, at IGGPPCHQ. I'm at Darling Stewie. <laughs> Frogmiller Inc. for everything. Frogmiller Inc. for Emily. Wherever you may want to find me, I'll be Frogmiller Inc. That's how, we, that's how I roll. So. And shout out yeah. to our staff, Jen, Emma, Ariel, Kimberly, Valerie, Summer. We love you guys. You guys are so amazing. Yes, I love you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> and thanks to you, Sarah, for having us and yes, for putting on this awesome, like, with us. fabulous oh. convention contessa. Love it. Uh, so cool. Well, we were we definitely were so happy you guys wanted to join us for part of it because it did seem like a very natural pairing. Yeah, we're like uh, wine and cheese, yeah. or wine and wine. I mean, whatever. Wine and dark chocolate. Yeah, all the wine. Wait, do I have anything to do this afternoon? Does it involve wine and dark chocolate? It might, might now. Um, <laughs> we'll just, we'll just, all three of us will get back on the hangout and we'll just all drink wine and, and chat it up. Except for Emily, who doesn't like wine. I don't know how. I <laughs> drink. It's okay. I'll just drink tea and eat mashed potato. It's fine. It's a standard Saturday night for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I really want some tea. I already. I just finished my tea, so I need more tea. I'm yeah, I, I, too. I too need more tea. Um, they're not called teas. They're called brews. Brew. 
brew. But in America, we call brews beers. Like, if I have a brew, it's a beer. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, if yeah, someone offered me a brew, tea. I would be very disappointed if they gave me tea. Yeah. I don't know. That's <laughs> what they call them. If you ever come to England, you'll be in for oh, a no. shock because, you know, the brew. Or a cup of cha. Cha? Yeah, a cup of cha, yeah. <laughs> Have I not told you that one before? No. Oh, yeah. No. I, lear I yeah. learned so much from Emily. Emily teaches me all the things about England and all the ways I can be a Spice Girl someday. <laughs> <laughs> um... Before I lose my train of thought, though, uh, and I personally wanted to thank both of you for uh, starting the Geek Girl Pen Pal Club because, like I said, I really love the pen pals that I that I have, and um, it's been really fantastic. Actually, uh, I totally owe Nicole a letter, so I feel a little, a little guilty. Well, you know, there is <laughs> punishment if you don't send your letter in a certain amount of time. Mm. Yeah, you get slapped with a fish. You get slapped with a giant fish, and that really happens. Someone really comes to your house, and it's a big, stinky old fish that slaps you. So if you want to avoid that, you should really get to sending your letter really soon. There's like a two-week. You're period. right, because that, oh. is, that is terrifying. Yeah, it's uh, really, like, it's not a pretty fish either. This is like an ugly fish with eyes, like, sticking out of the side of its head that, like, fangs and stuff, so you want to avoid that. <laughs> um... All right, well, I am going to uh, take us offline. Uh, thank you to all of our viewers, and thank you to everyone who submitted a question. Um, I know we did not cover all of the awesomeness that is the Geek Girl uh, Club, even though you did hear a lot of awesome things. Uh, so once again, I'll link to the website uh, and stuff on the event page. You should go check it out and sign up and get a pin pal. Um, and, you know, thank you so much for watching. And thank you for having us. <laughs> yes, thank you, you so know, much. It's been a blast. Listening to us ramble on. Next no, time, no, no. you should wrangle in some of the other stuff. Then, yeah. then you will see my... If you had all of us on here, it would just be like laughter and like giggling and like little girl chaos. Like When we all get together, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that sounds like a challenge. For sure. Accept just, that challenge, Sarah. Accept I that may challenge. accept that challenge. Um, <laughs> all right, but um, thank you so much, and please enjoy the rest of Contessa, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Thanks. Bye, Bye Sarah. Bye, Bye.